were just recently in Chile. Yep. Uh, visiting with the Jewish community there, seeing how the conflict is perceived on the ground, meeting with different perspectives, hearing different voices, and also, of course, sharing our story as Israelis. So, Yosef, you had some interesting experiences there. You may have heard of some of them already on social media. What happened in Chile? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Everything went so good. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wanted to boycott, nobody wanted to uh, 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 protest against uh, my arrival. They didn't even call that my arrival is, uh, what, what was it? Uh, violence. Violent. My presence is violent. My presence is violent. Now, let's explain, first of all, Chile is actually a very, very tense place when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict because they actually have a Palestinian population of the half biggest. a million. Yeah, yeah. Outside of the Middle East. Right. Yeah. The biggest Palestinian population outside of here. Yeah. Uh, they put up these flyers all around campus claiming that uh, Yosef's presence on the campus was not welcome. I'm such a and nice was, guy. I don't and understand. was violent. I don't know how a presence can be violent, but all right. Um, and then actually during your lecture, what happened? So th listen, but during the lecture, it was actually, uh, everybody he, he sat down and listened to what I had uh, to say. And in fact, it was a very good, uh, very good lecture. I gave them the facts, uh, you know, uh, in, in the crowd, we can say that it, the crowd was split. A split between those who were pro-Israelis, which is nice. They they heard the more information that they probably was new for them. Now they're using that information, mm -hmm. and there was those 50/50, uh, which you know they are not really. Uh, they didn't make up their mind to which side they they are leaning or which side they want to support. And my my by coming to there and presenting them the fact and from the point of view of an Arab Israeli, it really affected them because after the lecture, some of them came to me and said to me that, listen, without you, we couldn't really, you know, know those things. And obviously there were, there were but what I call them the anti-Israeli, but they're also anti-Palestinian. They took the Palestinian flag and they start speaking in Spanish saying, you know, Palestine apartheid resists, exists, Palestine yeah. arrest, the apartheid exists. Palestine resists, apartheid exists. I fought Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon. <laughs> I don't think that uh, being in Chile would make me uh, nervous. And I, even if you remember when I walked down from that lecture, going in between all those uh, activists, I even went there to speak with them, you know, face to face as close as possible. Uh, I'm not uh, saying that uh, I shouldn't be uh, 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 careful uh, because uh, you must. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't nervous at all. And in fact, uh, we can see the footage. I actually agree with them. We do need to free Palestine from Hamas. Free, free Palestine from Hamas. From Hamas. Free, free Palestine from the terrorist organization Hamas. Those people are suffering because of you guys. But, but uh, I mean, I, I kind of, uh, you know, uh, anticipated that and uh, this is something that, this is how their propaganda working and that's, that's completely fine. This is their way. My job, our job is to present the reality and this is exactly, again, what we're trying to do here. Now, Emily, you were with me uh, and we were together there and I would like to know your perspective from how do you see it from your experience in Chile especially around the campuses over there, mm -hmm. to what's going on in the United States, in the campuses around the United States. Yeah. I think that the thing that really struck me about Chile is, first and foremost, that a lot of the Jewish students were really genuinely scared. Some of the anti-Israel activity, like when things heat up in Israel, you know, they'll literally bull bully Jewish students just for being Jewish. And I think that in like the United States, we sort of don't hear about it. It's not talked about as much because like it's far away and it's in Spanish. We're not as familiar with it, but it's, we, we should be. You know, I think it's a huge, huge issue. I think Chile is an important country. It's an important front for dealing with this and that they, they need to get support and attention and education. But what do you tell, what from, do you tell the Jewish Chilean student to do? I mean, listen, at the end of the day, there is no option other than to stand up and fight. And I know that's not an easy answer, but when you're standing up for something that's right, that's what you have to do. You can't back down. You have to expose it when there's racism, when there's anti-Semitism. There's no other option. And the thing case, is, if you're silent, they're going to do it anyway. Exactly. And that's, that's what, what I was about to that's say. That's what the result has been in Chile. That's how they got to the situation in the first place. 
Um, and you, you can't deal with bullies that way, you know? And there, yeah. there are a lot, a lot of bullies in Chile. That's what I learned. Do there you, are a lot you, of bullies so in Chile. Do, so do you see what's going on in Chile is literally coming to the point of seeing this in the United States? Yeah, yeah, I actually do. I think that what the situation is on U.S. campuses now is significantly worse than when I was there. Um, so we're I, heading to exactly the point what we saw in Chile. Yeah, is, I would say that the only difference right now is that there's a lot more Jewish students on campus because it's a bigger community in the U.S. So in that regard, we have a slight advantage. But I mean, the anti-Semitic incidents on campuses right now are shocking. Yeah. Like the things that are coming out and the way yeah. that the administrations aren't supporting Jewish students is really... I mean, like, I'm, some of the things that have come out, I'm shocked. Yeah, uh, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I think still there's a lot to do uh, around the campuses in the United States and in, in Chile. Uh, and this is a, at least, at least towards the, you know, the, the campuses around America. This is like a fair warning of we need to do something way before it arrives the situation that we saw together uh, in Chile. Right. Um, so hopefully uh, it will be a, a better situation in, in the United States and uh, uh, for the Jewish students in Chile. Which actually brings us to Poland. Um, I know you don't our, know how that's, yet. That's our next topic. <laughs> um, but we just came back from Poland. We had a historic delegation of Israeli Arabs who visited Auschwitz for the first time. And we held a ceremony in mm -hmm. Arabic for the first time, a historical moment uh, for uh, the organization together vouch uh, for each other. It's an Arab-Israeli de delegation, uh, Arab-Israeli organization. Uh, and uh, I must say that I had the honor uh, as the CEO of that organization to lead that de delegation, the historic delegation. And not only we, we visited Auschwitz and we held the first ceremony in Arabic, but we actually a day later we participated in the March of the Living for the first time as well. Uh, so we made a huge history with uh, 30 Arab Israelis from all uh, the communities, the Druze community, the Muslim community, the Christian community, all together. We went there and we experienced something that I've never thought in my life would uh, experience. You, you know, know, you said you think that the biggest uh, success of this delegation was actually that um, the that it changed the the hearts and minds of the participants yeah. and they felt like a pull to go and to educate and to share with other people in their community about that and i actually disagree with you um i think that this is a huge uh, success of the delegation but something that's even more powerful is how the message it sent how it was perceived by everyone else yeah because for the Jewish community in Israel and abroad to see that the Arab Israelis are uniting and standing side by side with the Jewish community, that they are invested in understanding and mourning um, the history of what happened to the, to the Jewish community. I mean, this is huge steps towards healing and building bridges within Israeli society. Exactly, exactly. More, more than so, that. Which is not, of course, the reason that we did it, yeah. but that is a byproduct. No, no, but, but here's the thing. When, when people ask me why you are doing this, and I, the first answer is, the immediate answer is, I'm doing it because it's the right thing. We need to do it. We need to learn about it. But then I also add and say, you know, this is our way not only to fight anti-Semitism, but actually fight racism. Fight racism right. and, and we've seen that. We've seen, I, you know how many... A, a, you know, people from the delegation came to me and said, listen, we got so many messages from Jewish people that they are just telling us, listen, we are racist. We don't like Arabs, but because of you, we felt idiots to, to say that anymore. Th this is how we change people's mind. And, and, and it is a, a big win uh, and a huge success. And that's why we must, you know, you know, keep doing that more and more and more because eventually Israel is strong when it's society united and strong. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need uh, to do. And that's why I'm very proud of that uh, delegation. Okay, and now on to the best and the worst. We should just Yala. rename this to the worst takes because it's always, <laughs> it's always, I mean, there's so many on social media to make fun of, it's hard for me to find. Every once in a while, there's a good take though. I promise you the next episode. You say I'll that bring. every episode. Who says that every episode? <laughs> All right, stop. Go ahead. Uh, so we actually have three today. All right. Uh, so the first one is from Jewish Voice for Peace. 
everyone's favorite Jewish anti-Semites on social media. Um, they actually shared this tweet, which says that the Yom HaShoah holiday that we mentioned earlier in the show, Yom HaZikaron, which commemorates fallen soldiers, both Arab and Jews, from the state of Israel, and the Israel Independence Day are all part of a Zionist narrative. Yes, Jewish Voice for Peace says that Remembering the Holocaust is a problem because it promotes a Zionist narrative. Of course, this is absolutely ridiculous, but I wouldn't expect anything less from Jewish Voice for Peace. So that's my first take. What do you have, Yosef? Bella Hadid, the super superstar, supermodel, uh, who uh, shared this in her story. And as you see, she's saying that Israel is planning to wipe out the entire Palestinian community from their uh, land, from a specific land, which is a lie, a false. Um, and by the way, uh, not only uh, she was wrong, but Instagram decided to delete her uh, story and she complained after that about yeah. it. I mean, you can't get worse than that. Moving on to the third worst thing today, and let's see if you can top Bella Hadid. I can actually, her Ooh. father, <laughs> Muhammad Hadid. So he is also known for a lot of anti-Israel activity on social media. Uh, he's been posting throughout Ramadan about how Palestinians are being oppressed, genocided, all, all manner of terms that are not true. Um, and he shared, <laughs> he shared this video of Golda Meir, the former Israeli prime minister, oh, yeah. talking about how she herself held a Palestinian passport. Now, the irony of this is that in this interview, Golda Meir was speaking about the fact that there has never been a Palestinian state <laughs> and that Palestinian identity didn't actually exist prior to the state of Israel, despite the fact that the region did have the name Palestine that was given to them by the Romans. So for Muhammad Hadid to claim that this is an example of and what he wrote, as you can see, that Palestinians, uh, Arabs and Jews lived together in peace and it was all just harmony before the state of Israel is of course incredibly inaccurate. Yeah. Um, there were Arabs and Jews here, but there's been tension for quite a bit of time. Uh, and that was a, another intentional misrepresentation from uh, Muhammad Hadid. And by the way, we've already spoken about it in our show about the, the misuse of the uh, Palestinian history. Yeah. We've, say, we've seen that. And by the way, Muhammad and Bella Hadid keep uh, sharing this before and they keep sharing and they shared it before when they used the Australia versus Palestine, while Palestine was actually Maccabi Tel Aviv team. Yeah. And when they used the cone that says uh, Palestine, while it's written on it, Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, yeah. and more and more and I more mean, listen, examples. I the last episode, we tried to give them a Palestinian history lesson, and obviously they didn't pay attention. Nope, they didn't. I don't know. Maybe that's where he got it. Maybe that's where he got the Golda Meir clip that Prob we talked about. Probably. <laughs> Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you for joining us again on Headlines with the Haddads. We'll see you next time. See you next time.